Okay, so before we get into this week's episode of The Front Free, we are going to do something a little bit different this week. So we interviewed the chief soccer correspondent of the New York Times, Rory Smith. However, we're going to release it over three separate days. So Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, each episode covering a different topic. Today, we're going to look at Bayern Munich and their success in the Champions League and how they managed to rebuild their team from seven years ago when they won the treble. Enjoy. And Bayern Munich, a Champions of Europe for the sixth time. A team that's been an unstoppable scoring machine has kept a record-breaking season with the biggest trophy in club football. A great team full of great players. And they will celebrate long into the night. Okay, welcome back to another episode of The Front Free with myself, Big Will, Coach Dan and the prodigy himself, AJ. Again, AJ is not with us this week, but I promise he will be back very, very soon. But today you've got myself and Coach. How are you doing, Coach? I need to go and get myself a real job, man. I'm spending too much time with you. <laughs> Way too much time. I don't know what I'm our wives think. <laughs> I'm very well. How are you, Big Will? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. I'm looking forward to today's episode. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So um, joining us today on the front three is one of the world's best journalists. He analyzes tactics, matches and personalities. Um, he's previous, previously written for The Times, The Independent, The Daily Telegraph. And he also is a frequent guest on BBC Radio 5 Live and on podcasts such as The Anfield Rap and the Totally Football Show. Plus, he has his own podcast called The Set Piece Menu. He is the chief soccer correspondent for the New York Times, covering all aspects of European soccer, from the glamour of the Champions League to the reality of life away from the spotlight. It is the one and only Rory Smith. How are you doing, Rory? I'm all right. That feels like a much more uh, sort of grand <laughs> entrance than I deserve, to be honest. <laughs> we do the same for all our guests, don't worry. <laughs> Good. It's just, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it makes me sound really busy. I don't feel like I kind of, I can live up to that. This is going to be a massive disappointment for everybody. Oh dear, this. you might as well tune out now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I just want to kick off um, by talking a bit about Bayern Munich. So you wrote a piece about them and near the end of the piece, you talked about or oh, this is the quote you wrote, you wrote, Lisbon does not feel like an end. It looks an awful lot like the start. So just talk to us about how Bayern Munich have rebuilt their side from seven years ago when they won the treble to last year or last season, sorry, where they won the treble again. Um, sort of defying what people thought would happen with Bayern Munich. Yeah, I just, I think what they've done that's really impressive is, is basically they've pulled off a trick that, that all of those sort of super clubs of that level Mm-hmm. are continually trying to do which is to keep winning all the time because you, you have to win you, yeah. you know as Hansi, I spoke to Hansi Flick who's a lovely lovely man mm-hmm. and and he kind of said that you know doing the double now is kind of the basic requirement for Bayern mm-hmm. Munich so they they can't afford to have like just like Barcelona or Real Madrid or or, or Man City or Juventus they can't afford to be like right we're going to take two years out and just transition from one generation to the next they have mm-hmm. to keep winning every year mm-hmm. and they've kind of pulled it off but without any you've not really heard about kind of players you know old, older players getting annoyed at, at seeing younger players come in you've not heard about kind of this, this sort of annoyance over contracts not being re- renewed you've not mm-hmm. had any sense of kind of mutiny behind the scenes it's just all been really really kind of slick and I think it's been it's been a process of, I guess three years they in 20, so in 2017 they, they they opened this new this new academy Everyone's got to have a new academy now. Mm-hmm. Um, called, called the Bayern Campus, just just outside the Allianz Arena. State of the art, loads of pitches, all the stuff you expect from a super club. Um, and Hassan Salihamidzic, who's the, the technical director, kind of changes around the transfer policy. So they have this two tier system where they're partly looking for established stars, people like Leroy Sane, who joined this summer, mm-hmm. but they're also going around the teenagers Bayern team people like Alfonso Davis and um, and Chris Richards, the American defender who started to come through this season. And they start to just tr- start, I guess, to change the, the age profile of their squad a little bit because it was getting old in 2016, 2017, 2018. You know, Muller, Boateng, Neuer, Lewandowski, they're all, Thiago, I guess, they're all mm-hmm. reaching their late 20s and, and early 30s. There's a sense that they do need a bit of youth and a bit of kind of life injecting into the team. But the way they've done it is is intelligent and it's and it's you know data driven and it's thought through and it's all joined up it's it's everything that we expect a super club to do 
but the way they've done it without anybody, the headline was no one, no one really noticing. Obviously, people have noticed. But if you think about the the strife and the angst that you get when when Manchester United or Manchester City or Liverpool try to to mm. move older players out, mm. Bayern have, have basically had none of that. There was a little bit when when they signed a guy called Alexander Nubel from Schalke last. Mm-hmm. They they signed him this summer, but they announced they were going to get him on a, at the end of his contract mm-hmm. uh, earlier this year. And there was a bit of kind of, oh, what does this mean for Manuel Neuer? Mm-hmm. But basically what it means for Manuel Neuer is nothing, because mm-hmm. Manuel Neuer is still the first choice goalkeeper and Nubel will learn under him. Mm. And I think that is really rare in football now. If you think about kind of the, the way the news cycle works, that if a, if a big team loses a game, mm-hmm. they are automatically in crisis. Yeah, that's, that's you know, crazy. The, 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 papers, the papers the next day are kind of, the manager has to go, you see the reaction on Twitter is is constant football fans now exist in a state of constant terror basically of any mm. defeat mm-hmm. and Bayern have managed to kind of go from one from one generation to the next still with the same core of players and the four players who were on the pitch in Bayern shirts at Wembley in 2013 were in the squad that won in Lisbon plus obviously Robert Lewandowski who lost the Champions League final to Bayern in 2013 and won it with them in 2020 mm. and it's just been a really peaceful process and and that I think is is rare enough to basically be worth to be wor- worthy of admiration. They've done they've done what they're basically run like a team should be run, which is rarer in football than it really should be. Absolutely, and you know, thinking back to even last year, for example, where they sack a manager and then they come, um, Hansi Flick, he comes in and he wins the treble. I mean, it's quite a turnaround. Thinking about back to like last, say November, December. Yeah, and you look at the way they played against Atletico Madrid as well in the Champions League. You know, yeah. beating a team, beating a team that good four 0 is is a, a bit of a warning to to everybody else. I think, and that that I think is is the bit that would worry me the most. I saw a thing on Twitter the other day that they can name an entire first eleven of players who are under twenty or twenty five and under, mm. and and you know it's people like Leon Duretsu, Joshua Kimmich, mm-hmm. Davies, obviously Chris Richards, Nicolas Sula. They've got some really impressive young talent. And you look at Bayern's squad now and you think, do you know what? I mean, losing Thiago is a blow because he's a wonderful player, but Mm -hmm. they kind of should be better this year than they were last year. Um, They've got more depth. They've Mm -hmm. made some quite quite smart signs. So they signed a guy called Mark Rocker from Espanyol, who's been one of those players kind of on the cusp of a big breakthrough in Spain for a couple of years. Um, They signed a winner called uh, Bunasar from Marseille, who's 28, which is a bit of a weird thing to do, Mm. but he can play right, right back or right winger. I've seen him play live a couple of times and he's one of those that you look at and you watch him play and you think, God, he's really, really good. And then you kind of put him in Wikipedia and you think, oh, he's 27, a mm-hmm. mm, bit old now, probably won't go anywhere. But he, he's of a level to play, you know, play certainly be a useful squad player for someone like Bayern. So they've got this depth, they've got the experience, they've got loads of youth. They've got a coach who, who I think isn't a kind of, there's no like tactical wizardry to what Flick's doing, but he's mm-hmm. a really good coach and mm-hmm. he's a really good psychologist a great communicator. The players love him. He kind of gets the atmosphere. He's what that, he's, he's the sort of coach that I think those big clubs need where, you know, he can kind of manage the egos a little bit, make sure everyone's on board, looks after the young players, looks after the players who aren't playing, the ones who are injured. Um, It all is just there for Bayern now. And you look at what happened in 2013 is that 2013 was kind of the end of a cycle in one sense, because obviously Mm. then Guardiola comes in in the summer. And that generation of players has turned Bayern into a, into a proper elite super team, mm. but they never they didn't win another Champions League, and I think that yeah. was a bit a bit of a disappointment. Whereas now you look at them and you think, yeah, do you know what? There's a, there's at least one more in this team in the next couple of years, and it, it, the Champions League's a bit random, and this season will be really random anyway in lots of different ways. But th- they're pretty fearsome at the moment, Bayern, and and I think the fact that they've got to that stage without really being it feels like just yesterday they were in crisis that they were kind mm-hmm. of. Not knocked out of the Champions League by Liverpool, and everyone thought, right, they're too old. This is this team done. They need to change. Yeah. And then you know, 15, fifteen months later, they're winning the Champions League again. And you look at them, and all of a sudden, you think they can go for two or three years now and compete with anybody. And it's really only, I guess, Liverpool and City who look like they're they're good enough to stop them. Maybe PSG, although maybe not on the evidence of this week. And that's an, that's an impressive piece of work. Absolutely, Coach Dan. What do you make of um, Bayern Munich and how they've been able to keep things ticking over in the last seven years? Yeah, you know what? Bayern Munich is... Uh, when you look at these sort of like big European clubs, I think they're, the, they're one of the very few whose um, identity and way of business I'm, I'm really a big fan of. They've never been a team or a club who goes and spends, you know, over 50 million for 
players and stuff like that. And I mean, I suppose it kind of makes sense, although, you know, they, they have a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They have a lot of um, expectations when the season comes around. Even with that, they still don't go out and sort of like express themselves like some of these big clubs do in the in the in the transfer market and stuff like that. And I think it's it's down to obviously the fact that they probably don't need superstars in order to win their league, and and they seem to build their club around sort of like a team, a cohesive team mentality as opposed to mm-hmm. let's have a superstar who can rely on solely for winning games and stuff like that. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of that because it's. It's, it's, it's a way of working that is sustainable. You see, they've mm. always they've always been a club, even if you know they're, they're, they're not winning the Champions League per se, they're still competitive. They've always had a team who can go out and give any any team they play a good game. And and you know, we, we have Roby mentioned about you know, not that long ago, it seemed like everything was just crumbling around them, right? And they brought in Flick and he's done, he's done wonders. It's crazy, he's not really. He's not, he's not really added anyone new. It's just the players that they have, which is surprising because it's crazy how some the same bunch of players could be completely different for another manager. Then he comes in and they, it's just like this vibrant football and energy and everything they do. Of course, he's he's installed um, Mula back into the squad. He's, he seems like a big character and everything in there. I just hope. I just hope with what we saw last season, which was just amazing. It seemed like no team could get close to them, mm. right? I just hope it doesn't become like you know when your Panthers won the Champions League and they were missing for a while to to well last season. Even Pep Guardiola couldn't do a lot with them. So it'll be interesting to see what they do have. Are good, good. You look at left back for example. They got Theo Hernandez. And they've got they've got they've got um Davis and Alaba can go there in in defense they've got they've got I mean you look at Pavard can play there they've got um Nicolas Suli um Rory already mentioned right back they've got Nicolas Suli as I mean sorry they've got Kimmich who can play there Pavard they just got great footballers in all positions and Gorinska is a revelation since since um Flick took over and you know. He, he's showing off his talent that everyone thought he had when he was at he was at Schalke, and so everything just looks great for them. When you look around Europe now, a lot of the clubs, big clubs, seem to have a tr- problem here and there, except Bayern Munich. I know right now they're hoping that another Champions League final will be like next week because then they will go and win it again. So <laughs> yeah. it will be it will be interesting to see how they get on for the rest of the season, honestly. Okay, so that does it for part one of our interview with Rory Smith. Make sure that you tune in again tomorrow as we'll look at his interview with Everton manager Carlo Angelotti.